Okay, so I did a literature review on high intensity interval training versus low intensity steady state training on specifically the improvement of fitness uh, gains. So a little bit of background history before I uh, get into the content. Uh, so more traditionally, uh, LIS or low intensity steady state training uh, has been described a lot more often and therefore it's been researched and uh, tested a lot more um, and really hit um, now that it is more research now but it historically is not as much research uh, and really it didn't even come around until the, the 20th century um, there's this German coach who he he's the one who first called it interval training and he really focused on trying to increase the stroke volume of his runners. He would have his runners run up to 400 meters at a time, um, basically all out, trying to get their um, heart rate up to about their max and then wait for it to come back down before they did their next interval. And the, the goal was to build uh, the size of the heart and the stroke volume. Okay, so I compared uh, 10 different studies and the most significant thing is that most of these uh, studies, they were using uh, younger people, they were, they were healthy, and uh, almost in all the studies, they were being done on a uh, cycling um, test. So um, whether it was a Wingate test or um, using other measures, but it was almost always uh, a cycling test. And then we'll compare the results and conclusions in a little bit. So, first of all, I think it's important to say that no matter what training group it was, hit or less, uh, the, the fitness improved in every single study. Okay, so with the exception of uh, a very high level athletes or um, an elite athlete, uh, it's most important that the, an individual just literally spends time training and for most people training more equals more fitness and that was that was the case with um, every single one of these studies okay so here now i'm going to compare a little bit where hit um improves uh different measures better than this and then vice versa so starting off where uh hit um improved over lists we saw some of the biggest increases in very uh, importantly VO2 max. Uh, so based on different studies, we saw it improve up to 14, 22%. And that's one of the most um, common tests to measure overall fitness. And then um, also we saw a increase um, of up to 18% in skeletal muscle buffering capacity. Um, insulin sensitivity went up um, very significantly, um, up to 23%. And then other other measures such as um, the glycogen synthesis and uh, the total amount a, a muscle could store of glycogen. Um, the mitochondria activity, and in some cases density, uh, improved. And then the oxidative capacity, um, at the very least equally to uh, LIS, um, improved up to in some cases 35%, which is huge. So uh, why? Uh, why was HIT better at improving those specific markers? Well, first of all, it takes place across a whole bunch of different energy systems. Uh, because it's an interval style workout, you're going from a period of high work to a period of rest. Um, it, it crosses all those different um, energy systems. And another implication of that is because um, the higher work rate allows um, and pr basically produces a higher amount of inhibitory chemicals quicker um, because um, you, you have this time of rest and then you, you throw it in high work right away. Um, you're going to go through all those energy systems and it's going to produce a wide amount of um, inhibitory chemicals. And your body needs to be able to effectively deal with those and remove them. And because that demand is there, the body does become more efficient at removing uh, those wastes. And 
think it's also important to know that the mind is also more capable of pushing past uh, some of those thresholds as well. So um, then looking at the other way around, okay, where was list better than hit? Okay, first of all, we uh, saw that list actually was greater at reducing um, the resting heart rate. Uh, it also lowered body fat more significantly. It uh, improved cholesterol ratios better. And um, again, this is a little unclear, uh, but it also improved oxy oxidative capacity in many cases equally as well as HIT. And okay, now now why would that be the case? Um, why would all those different measures have been better? Uh, well, it's um, when you actually look at the studies um, and the methods of how the studies were done, it makes a lot of sense. So most of the studies that were done with HIT, they were extremely high intensity intervals for an extremely short period of time. Something like a repeat uh, Wingate test where they did. Uh, like a several 30 second sprints um, expanded by a couple minutes of rest. So basically the total working time of a hit group was significantly less than the total time um, of a uh, steady state group. So looking at some of the examples down here, we had one group was at 225 calories of totally work. Um, then the other group was at 2,500 calories. Okay. Then Another example is 1.5 hours versus 10 and a half hours. Three minutes a session, so like six Wingate tests at 30 seconds versus an hour and a half or two hours of total work. So a huge difference in the amount of total work. And that that's the real reason um, that total time um, and under attention and that uh, total caloric expenditure was that much more and that's why we saw changes in things such as the resting heart rate, the body fat, um, oxidative capacity, just because all that time is so much greater and that spent in um, that uh, working state and obviously that's going to improve many of those measures better than something that's really short in duration. Okay, so what are the applications of this? Well, I think first of all, it's important that we realize that um, as uh, someone who is an athlete or a coach um, trying to improve their athletes, it's important that they uh, focus on the quality, creating volume versus um, attempting to make the volume create quality, which is an almost impossible thing to do. Okay, then. Um, Another thing we'll look at is when should an athlete or a, um, a coach subscribe to their athlete's hit or list training. Also, um, the, I think these results have implications for uh, p different athletes with a variety of body composition goals. Then lastly, we'll look at the effect on uh, longevity, both mental and emotional, um, through hit and list. Okay, so just starting off. Um, okay, uh, we're, again, we're measuring this on, on, on fitness. So, so I think it's important that we define fitness and, okay, like who do we think is potentially the most fit, uh, beings on the planet? Okay. could be any one of those athletes at the bottom, depending on what your argument is. Uh, but really I think there's, um, a, a definition of fitness could potentially uh, involve all those athletes. So I think the best definition of fitness that we can use in this case is fitness is just the ability to maintain skill through fatigue. Uh, and I think that's important because it allows for uh, specificity to any number of different activities. Um, so under that definition, any one of those athletes could be the most fit. Uh, so it could be someone who needs to maintain skill through fatigue over two and a half hours, like the marathon, or it could be someone who only needs to maintain their fatigue through um, a very short duration, like three seconds or something, whatever the, the Olympic weightlifter takes to lift that weight overhead. So it could be a whole number of skills. It could be a very specific skill set. And 
this kind of leads us into the next thing, uh, the first item, which was, okay, we need to allow um, our quality of work to produce quantity, okay? So uh, there needs to be a focus on specificity. Uh, specificity is what is what allows an individual to achieve high um, performance. Um, so I think HIT is a much better at developing um, specificity. Um, so with, with lists, it's much harder to maintain a very specific motor pattern for a long time. Uh, with HIT, it's, it's much possible much more possible to make that happen. So for example, we have a, an, an athlete who can run a five minute mile. And that five minute mile, they, they, that's their max effort for um, a steady state uh, type of training. Uh, they could only maintain that for five minutes, obviously. A, in a HIT program, maybe we say, okay, we could train them through HIT, we could put them Okay, at a five-minute mile pace, we put them one minute on, uh, one minute off, or like rest, and that way we could put them through twenty high and low intervals. So at the end of that workout, they would be at twenty minutes of total work at five minutes a mile. Versus, okay, if we um, had them do a steady state workout, they could only maintain for five minutes. Say. So, Okay, that, that sounds good. I mean, obviously, that's going to help them produce uh, a greater uh, training effect. But what if we had them run um, 40 minutes at a 8-minute mile pace? Okay, that, that would be more traditional list-type training. But that doesn't mimic that ultra-specific motor pattern. So the motor pattern itself is going to look a little bit different at 8 minutes a mile than it would at 5 minutes a mile. And that's why... Uh, hit is such a useful tool because it allows us to train in that very specific motor pattern and allowing um, our athletes to train that ultra specific motor pattern allows for better neurological adaptation um, getting those muscular um, those muscles to fire together in just the right sequence um, so that intermuscular timing is going to be better and then also um, excuse me probably you can get into that energy system that is used a lot easier than someone if you're just doing a lower intensity steady state type training. So here's an example of what it could look like at a number of different uh, paces. Just looking at, okay, this is the same athlete running at a number of different speeds. And as you can see soon here, okay, that's a four hour marathon versus a three hour marathon versus a two hour marathon, look at the gait. There's lots of differences, okay? The leg drive's different, the turnover's different. Basically, there's a number of different things that are all different because the intensity has changed, um, and or the pace in that case. Um, intensity could be load, okay? So this is an example where uh, intensity is is changed in load so okay on the right we got an elite athlete um, setting the clean and jerk world record at 105 kilograms and then we have a novice on the left so you'll see in these two athletes that the motor pattern is much different um, but not only is the motor pattern different in these two videos uh, but it would also be um, significantly different between um, someone who is doing a very light type warm-up sets versus like a max okay so potentially if we saw um, the lifter on the right doing his warm-up sets it would look much different he might be able to um, not have to drop under the weight as much you would lift quicker would, there'd be a lot of different things that are just slightly different at a different intensity or a different load in this case and that's why it's so important that we train a very specific ultra specific uh motor pattern and i really think this is an area where um there needs to be a lot more study and it would not be a it's just a complicated thing to measure 
potentially, um, which is the reason why I think there's not more study done in this area. But it would certainly be helpful if there was more information here. So next, when should when should an athlete, if I was a coach and I want to coach my athletes, when should I have my athletes use hit or list? Okay, so I kind of broke it up into the season format, like all season, preseason, in season, postseason type thing. Okay, so in the off season, you're just coming off a grueling season. You need some more time off. You need to um, have your recovery be greater, um, increase some of your general physical preparedness, um, more of a general training phase. Um, getting rid of some of those overuse chronic injuries and uh, just getting some um, general strength and being able to recover better. So I think hit potentially or list could be used here. Um, and this is a good time where you can use either. Uh, but chances are it's going to be a lower intensity um, just allowing you to produce um, a little bit less total work, allowing you to recover better. Um, so depending on the type of athlete, it could be hit or list. I think there's other goals standing here. Not quite enough information to determine whether you should be doing hit or list, but you could be doing either. Okay, then in preseason, now that this athlete's recovered, they're ready to go for the season. Okay, we're going to now re-emphasize sport-specific movements and energy systems. And um, oftentimes, this means hit in traditional sports because most traditional sports, whether it's like something like soccer or um, like baseball, volleyball, um, or other more lactic sports like wrestling, um, they're going to be much more um, interval um, in nature. So... Um, because of that, it makes more sense to use um, interval training because um, that's going to mimic their, their sport a lot better. Then say we're looking at the postseason now. We're, we're looking at this final push to try to maximize fitness. Okay, These athletes are already strung out pretty, pretty uh, much to their maximum coverability potential um, or their MRV. Um, so we don't want to add a whole bunch of extra – stuff onto their plate because they're not going to be able to recover from that. So with adding a very minimal uh, dose time-wise, um, we could potentially increase a whole bunch of different measures, as you'll see there, um, through the use of HIT. So I think this is the most appropriate time to use HIT, something that's very short in duration, very high intensity, and yet it's going to produce a whole bunch of uh, fitness improvements um, for that athlete. So another thing that we want to potentially look at here, okay, we, we there's a whole bunch of different goals for body composition. So we might have an athlete who needs to lose a total amount of weight. Um, being light is the overall goal, and there are sports that are like this. That uh, you know that's why they're eating disorders in certain sports because um, athletes are rewarded for being light. And that's a realistic goal for some athletes. Um, other athletes, they are looking to be um, as light as possible with having the biggest engine possible. So they need a, a great um, Im improvement in their body composition as the season rolls around. And that's going to basically look like fat loss uh, because fat is not contractile. It's not helping them out. They need to lose it. And then the last type of athlete is the athlete who is looking to um, hypertrophy their muscles and just have an overall greater body mass. Um, many um, anaerobic sports, this kind of is more important, like something like a baseball um, or football player who's just looking to be big and strong. So first, first athlete, um, the weight loss athlete, they're going to need to burn the most calories. They're trying to create a caloric deficit in order to lose weight. So uh, this is the most important thing here is going to be some like time in activity. So, um, either way, the athlete is going to have to perform whatever they're doing at a little bit of a lower intensity or in order to be able to maintain, um, activity. So 
they're not going to do something like 30 second sprints to try to lose a whole bunch of weight. They need to have more time. Um, so that could be, that could be more list training or it could be just longer, um, intervals, um, through the use of hit. So that could be either one there. And our second athlete, they're looking to, um, maintain that muscle as they lose fat. Um, so it's very hard to gain muscle as you lose fat, but it's doable to definitely, uh, maintain the muscle, um, through fat loss and, um, Lisp being a little more catabolic in nature is going to have a um, more of a total weight loss effect, whereas HIT will have more concentrated on the fat um, because of the afterburn effect that it has. So, for a someone who's looking to um, improve their body composition and um, while maintaining muscle. Uh, hit might be a better option. Um, number of different interval lengths would be possible there. And now our third athlete who's looking to um, put on muscle hypertrophy, looking on put on total body mass, they're going to want to do a lot more hit in very short bursts. So they're going to do more of a, you know, something like a Wingate test where it's 30 seconds max all out. They rest for a minute or two, up to a couple minutes, and then they repeat. So that's not going to create much of a caloric deficit. They're going to continue to gain weight, but yet at the same time, they're going to produce fitness uh, gains. And the last thing I want to really discuss and touch here is, okay, what, what if we have an athlete who uh, really does not like to exercise? Okay, so someone who's sedentary, um, we need them just training. Like I said before at the very beginning, um, they're going to improve no matter what they do. So it doesn't matter what they do for fitness achievement as much as they're doing something. So are they more likely to stick with something that's hit bait, uh, like hit or list? So which would be like less mentally taxing and more likely for them to stay on top of it. And basically, uh, there's a whole bunch of different literature on this, but what it all boils down to is that choice is going to be the best policy for that person. So there, there could be like muscle fiber um, differences genetically, which they prefer one or the other. It could be a whole bunch of different things. Um, it might be easier for them to you know, do a short interval and then have time of rest, or it might be easier for them to just maintain it and keep going. Um, so it's up to them, basically. So any way that you can keep them positive, keep them motivated, um, they're going to have a higher achievement and stay with it. Um, so that's, that's the goal for that type of athlete. It's just basically let them choose that way they stick with it. So, uh, some of the things we went over was, okay, basically, um, hit is going to improve both anaerobic and aerobic, uh, fitness capacities with less time, physical and mental strain, um, potentially than less strain. Also improved the sport specific demands. Um, of an athlete, such as energy systems, body composition goals, that ultra-specific motor pattern, um, intermuscular timing, all these different things, um, hit is going to be more effective than this. Okay, um, improving the just the general physical preparedness and overall recovery is going to be better uh, through hit, and this is especially useful for an in-season athlete or an athlete going into a uh, post season, trying to get a little extra edge of conditioning. Also, uh, hit is going to increase, um, longevity in our athletes and it help them to prevent some chronic injuries. Um, oftentimes this is associated, associated with more chronic use, um, or, um, chronic types of injuries. Um, so, hit is much less likely to produce those types of injuries. And then lastly, okay, if we use hit, um, we can actually multiply the time possible for our athletes to stay in an ultra specific skill. Um, looking at that example of that athlete who's running a five minute mile, they can only maintain a five minute mile for five minutes in steady state, but they could do, okay, they could may, maybe go multiple times that if we put them into an interval style workout. And that um, greater um, time letting our um, quality 
produce quantity that actually optimizes our neuromuscular adaptations and intermuscular timing, um, allowing us to um, maintain skill uh, through fatigue, which is actually our definition of fitness. So overall, um, you know, it's not like there's a there's an, a direct answer um, whether hit is better than less. Um, but depending how you choose to implement one or both, um, the result is going to be increased performance for that individual.